Yo, it's Julian on the Brenner and a review of the movie Fall. And like the previous review of Samaritan, it's going to be a blunt instrument because I don't have my phone or any connection to the internet. So all of those juicy things like who's the director in the stars has gone out the window, particularly as this is a low budget indie film where none of the people in it are famous or have done any other films or at least nothing major. Uh, this was picked up by um, a distributor and re-edited a bit to remove um, uses of the F word because they saw something in it that could likely cross over and I can see exactly what that was. Um, it's um, it's quite a striking low budget film. Although the use of freaking <laughs> in it, <laughs> it like I was waiting for that word to come up. I can't believe that they would have to actually do that to, to you know, get a lower rating so that more people could see it. So it is a climbing movie, or at least a semblance of a climbing movie. So at the start, is you get the cliffhanger sort of intro. Uh, two girls and a guy are climbing this horrible mountain. Do you know what? I actually had a couple of films to watch on Friday night, and uh, this was third choice because I'm not. I hate heights so much, and uh, the other two films didn't work for me. So I, I actually ended up watching this through gritted teeth i was really not happy it starts with these three climbing on this uh, horrible cliff face and one of them's a husband to one of the two girls and he looks the part of a lothario from the word go and he promptly falls to his death you wind forward a year and the woman that was a husband they're both in there like uh, look like they're in their early 20s um the the wife or the widow has become a an alcoholic and pushed everyone away and uh, dad who's relatively famous um again i wish i could tell you who uh the guy from the walking dead i believe uh the only the only remotely famous person in it he's trying to reach through to her and she just spends her whole days you know ringing her dead husband's phone for a voicemail message her friend that was with her on the mountain turns up after a year of absence. She spent her time risking death for YouTube likes and trying to become, um, you know, famous on the internet by climbing up impossible towers and the like. And says, "I've got this thing for you to do um, to break through your grief, uh, which is we're going to climb this TV tower in in America." Uh, and I found this whole concept rather interesting because a lot of these uh, towers are taller than any man-made skyscrapers. And this, uh, the, the one that it, it pretends to be something it isn't, but the one that it actually is based on, I think it's the seventh tallest structure built by humans in history and probably the tallest in American history, uh, something like 2,000 feet tall. And it is just like the width of, you know, um, you know those spiral staircases, not much more than that, going up 2,000 feet and broadcasting... TV channels across the desert in California. She says no, but of course she ends up going and um, they head off into the middle of the desert into this sort of blocked zone where you're not allowed near it because pe people like base jumpers try and use it all the time. And it's a very iconic looking endeavour. I mean, this huge structure going up into the sky, incredibly narrow, really terrifying. I don't know if you remember the Star Trek movie where they had that when they were drilling into the Earth's core and they were sort of um, skydiving down this enormous tower. Got a bit of a vibe of that about it. So obviously things don't go very well. Uh, they climb up the tower and that's when um, they're right at the top on this plinth and I was pleasantly surprised by how little I was hiding behind my hands at this stage. But then chasing selfies too many they uh, destroy the ladder down so all they've got is this slippery pole all the way down hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet impossible to climb down and they're stuck on this tiny plinth 2,000 feet up and that's really the whole movie is is what happens from that point on um which is a great it's, it's a two-hander it's um you know it's 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 the borderline aspect here is that you could make it into a stage play uh, given the the even though the the location itself is so vast it, it you know if you manage to use a bit of nous in a, in a 
a production in a stage you can recreate their environment because it's you know smaller than the average room so it's got good reviews it's got a lot of good reviews and it's got quite a few bad reviews and i must admit i found myself disagreeing with most of the complaints that they had about this film the idea of the the romance that it being a love triangle and them finding out one near 2000 feet up in the air i twigged that from the first second it was so uninteresting that the husband was this you know lothario i picked it up straight away but the thing is they don't really dwell on it at all i mean they may some of the reviews said like it's you know got this melodramatic telenova romance angle it comes up but not very much it's you know a lot of films would have milked this as their main selling point comes up and it passes pretty quickly um and the other one was you know they all it's too long i didn't find it too long at all they said oh it dwells on the you know there's only so many ways you can show people hanging off of things i didn't think it dwelt on climbing that much and I didn't feel like it dwelt on them, you know, perilously hanging off of things too much either. It was, it kind of came across like a waiting for Godot in the sky. It was really them talking more than anything and sort of, you know, getting through each hour, um, which I found really interesting. And the final third really picked up uh, and had some, you know, some pretty good stuff really exciting stuff happening in the in the third final third and it, it relied on dialogue a lot more than action i thought um so i thought it did a lot of things really well and i don't agree with a lot of the criticism of it i thought the director was really good the editing was good the, the screenplay and the visuals were good it had a really strong atmosphere because there was no soundtrack it didn't rely on any soundtrack wasn't too long i thought it built nicely over the course of the runtime so the final third was all let up by some pretty striking stuff the only real complaint filmmaking wise i've got is the actual end itself is far too fast we needed a like a, it, it happens in like a minute and we needed another 10 minutes on top to sort of wind down you don't get the satisfaction you think you're going to get so i uh, you know it's it's I've, I've mentioned about the jurassic world having uh bryce dallas in it and uh heaving bosom heroines you get two heaving bosom heroines for the twice the one in this film um and i thought they were both excellent um i thought both the actresses in this were great no one else has you know relied on in the whole film so i thought it was really good and it did make me put my hands in front of my face in that final third of the film so i'm gonna give it an eight to four out of ten eight out of ten for full 